In today's In Detail segment, we're going to be looking at parking in townhomes, and we're using all of our examples from the Philadelphia area. As you remember from the slow home test, the spaces devoted to parking are appropriate for the house and do not dominate or interfere with the rest of the residence. The challenge with townhomes, of course, is that that's difficult to do with the narrow width. Yeah, townhomes are always fighting for space, they're always narrow. So as you remember from the What's Wrong With This House book, the rules of thumb for parking are that we want to have a reasonable number of spaces for the size of the unit, and the parking shouldn't dominate the house. From the exterior. It also right. shouldn't dominate from the interior, which means that it shouldn't negatively impact the interior rooms in the house. And finally, it should have su sufficient space to park with circulation around the car that's unobstructed by stairs or door swings. Yep, so let's have a look at some examples exactly. that we Brought pulled some. of both good and bad parking. And the first one is bad, and I want to talk about this because this is something that always happens in townhouses. They actually design these townhouses to the minimum width to fit a car and then their only the remaining door. space is a door. And that's a really bad example because they're really trying to cheat out as much space as they can. The problem also with this is you notice we don't have the minimum two feet that we need for side yard clearance on, on either the, side of the door right. so for the no garage. Way to walk. There is no way to walk. So we've got to try to avoid um, units that have parking that is like this. This is a much better example. And this just is just basically the developer has allowed more room. So we've got a full single car garage and the entry space is actually wider than the width of the door. And we've also got our two foot clearance on either side. Right. So that's a better example. It has to do with the width that they've allocated for the unit. Double car garage, same thing. We've got a double car garage. They've had to add this 45 degree angle in just to eke out a little bit of space to have the, the entry from the street. Again, I don't think we have our two foot clearance on the side. We also have an issue with the stair to the upper floor being dotted in, which means that it's encroaching in the headroom of the parking garage. So that's a problem. So this is a much better example. This is where they've used the whole width for parking on the ground floor, but the entry to the unit is actually on the second floor. Right. So that's a better way of doing it rather than trying to jam if in an entry. If you've got a really narrow width. Yeah, if you've got a narrow width, it's better to try to get the entry up if that's possible. Um, this is another example that's poor, and we see this all the time. We've got our standard single car garage, which is okay. The entry, unfortunately, comes into the living space because we don't have enough room really to have a living room plus an entry plus a garage. No. So they've cheated that and even though the garage is technically okay, it has a negative impact on the rest of the house. Exactly. So this is a better example and again it's just to do with the width of this space because we've got a garage here, we've got enough room for a stair, they've set the entry off the stair and then there's still room for a living space so it has to do with how much they've allowed for width in the room. I hate these types of examples because it's not a bad idea to have the parking on the back of a townhome. I've seen, we've seen some successful ones like that. But again, what they've done is they've got a bedroom space on the main floor. We have to be really, really careful when they put a bedroom space on the main floor as well as parking because often it doesn't work with the entry. And in this case, they've got a 45 degree angle to get around to the garage. It really is too tight. It's almost the same problem if the garage was at the front by the entry, it's just reversed. This is a much better example. Here the, the parking is on the main floor, but as you can see they've got a wider width. They've also got a place that you can come so you into the house. Have an entry that's shared. Exactly. And these are actually quite successful because the door to the garage really should be adjacent, I think, to the entry if it's on the ground level, and we shouldn't create a whole separate entry for the garage. I think that's really interesting and, and so many of those examples talked about not just the technical clearances are in the parking lot itself but how it impacts the rest of the house and you see that probably more than in any other house with the townhouse example. Right. And I think we've got good examples that show that it is possible to actually design the parking on a narrow lot that is, that's right. that you actually have an effective entry and you don't sort of screw up the rest of the space but a lot of times it's just totally ignored. That's our in detail analysis of parking in townhomes in the Philadelphia area. Thanks for watching the Slow Home Design segment.